Please remember that the complete information for the class that you are about to view is at elithecomputerguy.com. Not only do we have our videos there, but we have part lists, diagrams, pictures, and even complete code examples. So if you are watching this video and you want more information, please go to elithecomputerguy.com. Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and in today's class, we're going to be talking about the isSet function in PHP. So basically, what the isSet function allows you to do is it allows you to see whether a variable's value has been set to anything at all. So this can be very useful for you um, when you're going to be creating web applications that have some kind of login process. So let's say you have a login process, and once you log in, the a session username a variable value has been set, right? So basically, when some somebody is navigating through your web application, they're then going to have a variable value of whatever their username is. Well, once they have logged in, once that value has been set, you're probably going to want to show them specific information for somebody who has logged into your web application. But what about if somebody hasn't logged in yet? That's one of the ways that you can use the is set function. So basically what you can do is you can use the is set function. So you can say is set and then, you know, dollar sign username. If there is a value for the username variable, uh, then you know that username has been set and then you can have the script run and show whatever information is supposed to be there. If the value for dollar sign username has not been set though, uh, basically what you can have is something like a little login form pop up so people know that they have to log into your web application to go any further. So the is set function can be very valuable uh, basically to sit there and to see whether a value for a variable has been set. This can also be very useful if you're going to be uh, creating an application that's going to be dealing with a lot of math. So let's say you're, you're pulling in a lot of numbers from different sources so from different databases maybe from different apis you're going to add those numbers subtract those numbers do all kinds of fancy math all kinds of fancy math well what's the number one thing that can screw up all kinds of fancy math what if when your script goes out to pull in uh, vari values for variables, for some reason the script fails? Uh, the API connection is down. You fat fingered something. So therefore, when it goes out to make the call, it fails. You know, any number of reasons when your script goes out to pull in numbers, what happens if there's just an error and so the value for the variable isn't set to anything at all, right? If you do the math, if you do that fancy equation with a whole bunch of blanks in it, you're going to run into problems. You're going to get a bad answer but you may not realize you're getting a bad answer. Again, if you have a whole bunch of data sources, a whole bunch of different numbers coming in, you're doing a whole bunch of different math on those numbers, right? When you get the, the final result, you may not realize it's a bad result that for some reason you did not pull in, you know, five different numbers from different sources. So one of the things you can do is you can use the is set function to basically have your script fail out or to have something else happen. So, you know, go, go out, get it, get a number from this API. Okay, is set. Yep, we got the number from that API. Okay, go out and get a number from this API. Is set. Yep, we got a number from that API. Okay, go out and get a number from this database. Is set. Nope, it failed. So when, when it failed, when that variable value has not been set, then you can write code on what should happen next. Should it simply just fail out and give you an error message? Should it do something else? That's what you get into with fancy PHP code. But basically, the is set function is one of those very, very, very simple tools. Um, it is so simple, it's easy to overlook, uh, but it can be very useful for everything from basically user management within your web application to, again, once you start doing much more sophisticated math, again, you're pulling in 100 or 1,000 numbers Numbers, you're going to do a whole bunch of trans transformations on those numbers if for some reason five or six numbers aren't set that variable values aren't set that could cause you some problems so, so today I'm going to be showing you how the is set function works so there's not a whole hell of a lot to the is set function. So let's go over to my demonstration system. I created a little script, basically the equivalent, like a little login script uh, to show you how the final demonstration should work. And then we'll go and we'll take a look at the code. So here we are at my demonstration machine. Uh, for this particular machine, it doesn't matter what it is. Again, I'm using a MacBook Pro and I'm using Safari. But the main thing here is I am using a web browser. With the web browser, I'm connecting back to the my LAMP server, my Linux Apache MySQL PHP server, where I have the is set PHP script running. So basically, I go to my server, <clears throat> I type in the, uh, the the URL for the is set.php. And since I have not given a variable name to this particular script, it is asking me what my 
my name is. So this is this is what you see when the value for the for the variable has not been set. So what I can do is I it can say, you know, what is your name? I can click on this and I can say, I don't know, my name is Yolanda. And then when I hit submit, it now says hello Yolanda. So basically what happens there is when I initially go to the script, the name has not been set. And since the name has not been set, I more or less get this, this login form. Once I then click on the login form, um, I put in a name for somebody, I hit submit, now the value for the variable has been set and so i get this echoed out printed out uh, return instead so this is kind of sort of basically how is set can work in the real world so with that let's go over and take a look at the script itself so for this particular demonstration, uh, we are using only a single script file. So we simply have the is set.php. So I have written this out in VS code to make it a little bit easier for you to read. Uh, and we'll just step through this. So there's a couple of things going on uh, with this particular script. Uh, the first thing is we are using that is set function. So I'm showing you how to use the is set function. The other thing that I'm doing here is I'm actually creating a form in HTML to ask for the name. And then I'm I'm actually posting that name back to this particular uh, file and I'm setting the variable value up here uh, so those are the two things that are going to be happening so basically what's going to happen is if the dollar sign name uh, variable has no value uh, what's going to happen is that the PHP is going to print out this form asking for a name when you hit the submit button that is then going to submit whatever name you've given back to this form so it's going to come back as the post uh, name that is then going to set the value for dollar sign name so that we come down here to the if else statement then the is set has something to work with so essentially that's how this script is working so we go down here and basically we have an if else statement and so with the if or what we're saying is is set so literally all you say is if is set and then you put the, the parentheses and then you have whatever variable name that you want to see if it's set or not. So it is set um, dollar sign name. And then so if it is, we are simply going to be echoing out. We're simply going to be printing out on the screen. Hello. And then whatever the value for username is else what we're going to be doing is printing out this form form action is set.php so it's going to be returning the value here back to the script itself. The method is going to be post echo your name, input type text, name equals name, and then input type submit. So basically with this, when we hit submit, name is going to be sent here. That is going to set the value for dollar sign name. Then we're gonna come down here, is set. So if, if name is set to something, then it's going to say hello, whatever that value is else is simply going to print out the form and so this is how is set can work um, and again it can be useful for things like uh, user logins or again maybe maybe possibly more complicated math if you're going to be pulling in a lot of number values from different sources you can pull in the value you can say then is this variable set is set if it is set continue with the script if it's not set fail out something like that um, and that's basically how is set works as a function so now you know how the is set function works in PHP. Again, it's a tiny little function there. All it does is see if a variable actually has a value associated with it, and then you can do if else statements. Again, if you know the username has a value, then print out hello, whatever the username is. If the username does not have a value, then print out a login form. Those are the types of things that you can do. So is set is just one of those simple things that you can use uh, to really make your web applications a hell of a lot more useful to the end user and again to do things such as validate and make sure that the data that you're trying to get actually gets pulled in and that can be a, a major problem when you're coding apps especially in this modern world we're going to be pulling in data from more and more and more sources um, remember if if for some reason your app goes out to try to set the, the value for a variable and that that process fails for some reason if you don't error out the script's gonna continue, right? If if you if you tell it to add up and then average, you know, a hundred different variable values, if you if you don't error out, 
it's simply going to do it. You know, the script the script doesn't care if the variable has a value or not unless you code it into the script. So if you have a hundred different numbers that it's supposed to add up and do something with, and then for some reason, 20 of those variables uh, simply don't get set, again, for whatever reason, the number that you're getting out, the result that you're getting out could be complete and utter garbage. So it's doing something as simple as just saying simply, you know, is this variable set? Before we continue with this equation, is this variable set? So is this variable set? Is this variable set? Okay, now let's add those two together. Is this variable set? Is this variable set? Okay, now let's add these two together. Is this variable set? Yes. Is this variable set? No. Oh, okay, let's let's fail out. Uh, again, print out a little warning about what happened uh, so that you, you as the coder can then figure out how to try to fix the problem. So these are, these are the little things that can cause you some really big issues, especially when you deploy your code uh, into a production environment. Remember, you know, when you think about it, think about all the numbers you deal with in a day, like statistics, all these numbers, right? Do you ever go back and do the math? Do you do you ever like you see all of these numbers? Have you ever gone back and actually done the math and verified that end number is what it's supposed to be? No, nobody ever does. So if you don't set, if you don't build in uh, failout points, if there's problems, again, people are just going to assume that finished number is correct. And they are going to make decisions based off of that number. And if that number is based off of garbage uh, variable values, it's going to be a real big problem. So that is the is set function for you. As always, I enjoy doing this class. I look forward to seeing you at the next one. If you like the content that I create, please think about going to elinethecomputerguy.com and becoming a member or donating. Please understand that all the educational videos are in front of the paywall. That includes the videos, that includes the notes, the diagrams, and the code example. All of that is freely available and in front of the paywall. But if you want to watch opinion videos or if you want to be able to comment, you do need to become a member. Membership is $5 a month or $60 a year and gives you access to those opinion videos and the ability uh, to comment. If you don't want to become a member, you just want to give a one-time uh, donation, there is also a donate button where you can do that. Please understand, in order to provide the education that I am, it does cost money. Servers cost money, equipment costs money, travel costs money. All of these things cost a reasonable amount of money. And the fact of the matter is, is YouTube's advertising program no longer supports creators the way that it used to. So if you want to these classes to continue to stick around and you find them to be valuable, please think about either becoming a monthly member or donating a few dollars for this project.